if they can legitimize this product category, they're going to be running Steam. And so either way, Valve wins. Hello and welcome back to another Nihongo Gamer video. It's time for another episode of Water Break. And we're going to be talking, of course, about our beloved Steam Deck, which was only announced last week, but there were rumors running up the past couple of months about a Steam handheld. And one of the biggest topics of conversation about the Steam Deck is, is it going to kill the Nintendo Switch? And of course, after posting the video a couple of days ago about the Steam Deck, there are plenty of people jumping in the comments saying like, it doesn't have the games to beat the Nintendo Switch. It doesn't have the removable controllers to become as convenient and usable as the Nintendo Switch. Like at the price they're trying to sell this thing at, there's no way that it can compete with the Nintendo Switch. And I just keep reading these comments. And of course, I understand where you're coming from, but I really feel like, and as I said this in the previous video, this is not aiming to be a replacement for the Nintendo Switch. Of course, the people who like a gaming device like this, Nintendo Switch, are gonna be interested in something like this. But also, hardcore gamers who are on their PCs, their desktop PCs and their laptops, they're also going to be kind of interested in this device. So this is a device, like I said in the previous video, which sits somewhere in the middle. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? Should they have just tried to make a properly consoleized experience that basically is, you know, going to undercut and outdo the Nintendo Switch in every way? Or were they right to go with this like weird new thing in the middle? And I want to say, the main thing I really want to tell you today is, I feel like we have seen this before with the iPad. Now in 2010, I believe it was when 2010, when the iPad was revealed and take, um, allowed, made for sale in May of that year, there was one article that really struck me and I want to show it to you because I don't know how many people actually remember this particular article, but this is the one that really struck me the most. And it's on, an, it's on a website called stephenfry.com. Everyone loves Stephen Fry. I believe he just uses this website to put all his blog posts and things. Anyway, I'm not going to show you the whole site, but the most important part that I want to show you is this part here, where like he was really product evangelizing the iPad at a, at a point where a lot of us were kind of disappointed. We were like, wait a minute, the iPad? That's not a netbook. And we're like, well, I think a lot of people were in the rumors saying was, Apple's going to make a netbook. I know, you haven't heard that word for a long time, right? Well, it's coming back. Anyway, this phrase particularly struck me. It's just like, you will see characters in movies use the iPad. It's just like, really? This weird thing which basically looks like nine iPhones slapped together on a piece of cardboard? Do we, is this really what we want? I mean, there's no keyboard. How are we going to interact with it? We're not going to draw on it with our fingers because a lot of people, of course, at that time, even back then, I say back then, in 2010, people were still interested in the idea of drawing on tablets. Wacom was already selling plenty of graphics tablets and had been doing for decades by that point. The thing about with before the iPad came out was there was this product category and it was called the netbook. And the netbook was kind of an awkward place because it existed thanks to hardware that was being made available at the time, like cheap, low powered processors that would allow a computer to be in a very small package and run at a low speed. But then you, it meant that you could do all your really basic tasks like word processing. Of course, once you create a product like that, people get really excited. They're like, wait, if there's such a thing as a netbook, then maybe we can use it for gaming as well. And maybe we can do all the things that we want to do on big laptop computers or on our desktop computers. Anyway, there's a whole story that goes with this. But if you fast forward to only four years ago, you may remember on the Nihongo Gamer channel, I actually made this video. I made this one, since when is this possible? And there's also another video I made down here, netbooks aren't dead, right? So actually, I, I believe I actually posted this one first. It says three years ago, but it was actually four years ago. This, this was posted in 2017. And I think maybe give it another month, it'll update to say four years ago. But the thing about the netbook, right, was that it really could not run games. It really did almost every task that a laptop could do 
but worse. It just it was just a very painful experience. But the thing was, they were convenient enough that they were small. You could put them in your bag with your camera, and you could go trekking, taking photos, and you could at least back up your photos on it. So it's like, I, wa I don't want to interact with this teeny tiny keyboard, but at least I can do some very basic tasks and make sure my data is backed up and stuff. Well, fast forward a number of years later and the iPad has already come out. They also created these things called the, well, I don't even know what you would call these. They're, they're not netbooks, but they're kind of these mini UM PCs. I think they were called ultra mobile PCs. And as you can see, I'm playing games on them. And for example, in the second video, I actually tested out Street Fighter 4 and it ran at a good 60 FPS. In fact, I think it ran at like 120 FPS. It, it ran really, really fast. And it was, I was really, really impressed with what it could do. But the thing about this product, the GPD Pocket, was that it wasn't really aimed at being a gaming device. It was capable of running games, but there were a large number of things about this product, the GPD, that still made it still kind of held it back from being a really good game console. Now, they made another version, the version before this, the GPD Win, and also the GPD Win, I believe they made a GPD Win 2, which actually had analog sticks and buttons so you could play games on it. But in my experience with this product, which they actually sent me a GPD Pocket to make these, these videos that I made for, for YouTube, in my experience, even though it was capable of running games on it, it wasn't ideal for running games, and the reason was throttling. It's kind of like a dirty word in the PC community, but it's like, this device can perform at a certain speed, but only if it's not hot, which means if you play the games on this device for a little bit too long, it starts to get hot and you, you, you're not able to play the games anymore. The other thing is, if you're at like 50% battery and you want to continue playing games, you plug in the charger, right? Well, now you're charging a battery and the, the battery is getting hot. Batteries get hot when you charge them up. So while the device is charging, it can't run at its top speed. So it's actually like, the best way to use this device was to remove the power so it's not charging, but then you've got a limited no a number of hours that you can play it because like it's running out, it's running the juice low on the battery while you're playing. So after a couple hours or maybe less than a couple hours, you've run out of juice, you've got to plug it in again. So a large number of issues. But what I'm trying to say here is that even with the GPD Pocket or the device 10 years or seven years before when we had these netbooks coming out, we, at that point, were blessed with this product, the iPad. So I think actually Stephen Fry, he's got a photo in here from when he went to the like testing area after they announced the iPad and did all the press release information and all that. And the thing about the iPad was that it wasn't what we were expecting. We thought Apple had cracked the code. They'd figured out how to make a great netbook, but they hadn't. They were just like, you know what? Actually, and I believe Steve Jobs said this himself. He's just like, I don't actually, I don't know if he said it with his mouth, but I remember Apple was saying something about IPod, the netbook category being a nascent product category. This is not a product category that is going to have legs. It's not going to go anywhere. So we're like, okay, so why are you making a netbook? Then they did the presentation, and I remember staying up all night to watch it because I was in the UK at the time. So I had to like watch it at like a really crazy hour so I could watch it at the, I think it was morning in America was like 3 a.m. or something in the UK. I don't know what exactly what time it was. And they came out with the iPad. I was just like, what? No, 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 no. There's no keyboard. I don't even think it had a front facing, like a selfie camera. It doesn't have a pen for drawing on it. You can't run Windows on it. So you couldn't play almost any games that you were used to playing on it. The main thing about it was it can run iPhone apps. And it's like, okay, listen, the iPhone is amazing. And you can play that marble game. At the time, like, like the, the extent of iPad, iPhone games. There were some really cool ones out there, but all the one, I, the only one I remember playing was like you, you like tilt your iPhone around. You've got that little marble running around. And I was like, yeah, do we really need a an eight hundred dollar device to play iPhone games? Really, is that necessary? But they totally took us for a ride. Didn't I say took us for a ride? They really surprised us with. I mean, I think you all know how successful the iPad was. And not only was it a successful product, but it was a successful product category. So netbooks were dead, 
Long live the network, right? Viva Leroy, Leroy is a more, or sorry, it's Le, Leroy is more, Viva Leroy. Basically, they said, screw netbooks. How about this for a product category? And that's why I feel like this device, which we've been talking about, the Steam Deck, I feel like this is actually kind of interesting. Still, we don't have 100% certainty that this product is going to be successful, whatever that means. But I feel like we have seen this story before because we had netbooks. We had netbooks and then they were replaced with the iPad tablet category. And then Samsung was making tablets and Google was making tablets and everyone under the sun was making a tablet. And tablets are still popular today. Even the tablets that are not made by Apple, there are plenty of people using tablets like Windows based tablets and touch screens and large touch screens. This is clearly a form factor that worked. What we are seeing is the same story again. The UMPC, the GPD Pocket, which has been a lot of people probably don't even know about this product because they weren't really that interested in something as niche as this, is that for the price of, and I believe the price at launch was here, $600, right? This is $600. Remember, this came out the same year as the Nintendo Switch, right? The Nintendo Switch, it came out in 2017, right? It came out in 2017. So... Nintendo Switch comes out at, in 2017 at a price of, what, $300? And it plays Smash Brothers. Maybe not immediately, but eventually it would play Smash Brothers, Breath of the Wild, some wildly amazing Nintendo properties, Nintendo games. And then this thing comes along, and it's just like, hey, you can play your Steam library on this. But, you know, if you plug it in, it gets hot. And if you play it for too long, it gets hot. And then it will throttle. And there are all sorts of issues. And even though it has these issues... Uh, listen, it was a very impressive product. And all the other UMPCs, they're all really quite amazing for what they do. But despite the fact that they can't run in an ideal fashion, like overheating. Like, basically, how many times have you stopped playing your Nintendo Switch because it overheated? Like... I doubt there's very many people who've run into that very specific situation. But with this device, it was like, we want double. We want $600. So you could buy two Nintendo Switches for that price, and it's still not going to be an ideal way to play your Steam library because the mouse on this thing, where's the picture of the, the mouse? Like, the mouse is one of those little nubs. It's like <laughs> a lot of us hadn't seen the nub for about eight or nine years like who how many people are still using an ibm thinkpad like everyone is i i think ibm thinkpads still exist but they or, or maybe they're called lenovo thinkpads now whatever it is a lot of us hadn't seen this nub for a very long time we're like what you're bringing back the nub the point is in the past four years what has happened is companies have tried to build up this new product category but they don't have the power to make it work. And that's what we were talking about in the previous video. Valve is a company that owns Steam and they have the money and the power to make it work. That doesn't mean it will 100% succeed, but wow, I think this is the closest we are ever, like not ever gonna get, this is the closest that we've got for a very long time. So after this device came out, loads of other people were making some really cool devices like the GPD Win, the version like this, which but has the analog sticks. And one of the more recent ones that's come out is this. It's called the Aya Neo. I don't actually personally have one of these, but I think like it's coming out, it's like even here, so it comes out summer of 2021 in Japan. I don't actually know when it comes out in other countries, but check this out. This is the Aya Neo store. And as you can see, it clearly aims at the same sort of form factor as this, but I don't think it's the same market. The people you would buy a Nintendo Switch for are, for example, your own kids or just for yourself or as a gift for your partner. Just this has got so, there's such a large, massive demographic of people who would buy a Nintendo Switch because it's cheap enough about $300, and it's got all the IPs that people are nostalgic for, and, and even if you're not just old and you're nostalgic, if you're a young kid, there's plenty of titles and fun games for you on here. But I don't think this is the same category as the people who would buy something like this. This is a category of people who are willing to spend, uh, well, there's all sorts of things that we can say about the, this product category, but I think they're willing to spend a little bit more money than for something like the Switch because they get the, f the flexibility of running their entire Steam 
library. It doesn't guarantee that every game is going to run well, but apparently the Steam Deck, from what we've seen, it's got the Zen 2 architecture, it's got this APU with the RDNA 2 graphics cores in it, and at the time when I was getting into this stuff four years ago, this thing did not have a graphics card on it. Like to run 3D games, to run the stuff that I ma I played here, like Street Fighter 4, or I think I was playing Death Smiles in here. Like it ran okay, but it was running on Intel graphics. That is not a separate graphics chip. And it was not as robust as what we're seeing in more recent things like this, which has, you know, the AMD Ryzen 5 4500U in it. And it's got Radeon Vega 6 graphics. Thing is, look at this price tag. $1,015. Now, I don't know if that's because there's a chip shortage or whatever. I've never even looked at this page until this until today. But it's it, this is quite a high price. But it's a price that some people are willing to pay for the ability to get the Steam library in a in this, this form factor, the one that allows you to basically play on the couch. I feel like that is one of the most important things about the Steam Deck. And I'm, I'm planning on making a separate video because I just don't want to talk for too long in this one video. But I feel like the categories of people who would buy a Switch and the people who would buy um, the Steam Deck are, are so different that although you might be thinking, can I take this on the bus? Like, I think for the Steam Deck, a lot of people will be like, I may never take this on the bus. I may never take it out of my house, but I'm going to buy a Steam Deck because I just love the idea of sitting either, you know, in my garden and playing my games where the Wi-Fi is not strong enough to play Steam Link. Or I think there's a picture of a person just sitting on the couch. Like, I think that's a sofa right there. Yeah, well, there you go. There's the, there's the picture of the sofa. And there's not a lot of pictures in the advertising here of people actually out and about. I don't think I've seen, like in the most recent trailer for the Nintendo Switch, the OLED model, which is $50 extra, but it has a really nice screen. And if you know anything about OLED, you'll know that the colors will be much nicer and the blacks will be a lot closer to an actual black color. But look at the marketing for the Steam Deck. <laughs> They're basically like, you're willing to spend $400 if it means that you can chill out on the sofa with your family while they're playing, playing, while they're watching Netflix. And while you're kind of watching Netflix in the background, but what you're really doing is making some progress on your Steam Deck, on your Steam library of games. I think that what we're about to see is very, very close to this article. We're about to see a product category which was not working out. Not because this hardware is lacking. This, hard, this, this product category was not working out because it's just too expensive. To make something like this, and we talked about this in the previous video, it costs a lot of money and they've got to make a profit every time they sell it because they don't own Steam. They're going to have to sell it for $1,000 if they want to give you this level of hardware. And although this may not have, I don't know how the, I don't know how the GPU and the, CPU compare. This is a four gigahertz CPU in here. I think the Steam Deck is, it ramps between two gigahertz and 3.5. I can't remember exactly what the stats are. They're in here somewhere. But instead of giving you exactly what you would have got in something like this, the Aya Neo, you know, the Steam Deck is aiming at being a lower powered device, but one that can make this product category work. And so it's kind of like UMPCs are dead, long live the new UMPC. And I think that's why I highly recommend that you check out this article. Again, I'm not gonna show you the whole article, but basically you can replace every word, every time they write the word iPad in here, you can replace it with Steam Deck and it will like kind of, it will kind of work. It's not like for like. I think if Stephen Fry were given a Steam Deck, I don't think he would write an article and go like, this is gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be in movies. I think it's unlikely that you'll see a Steam Deck in lots of movies, but you will probably see them in a few. For example, the most recent one was PlayStation Vita for me, because on the that, there's a show on Netflix called Cobra Kai. If, if, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. I really enjoyed it. Cobra Kai, there's, there's one of, the, one of the, the son of Daniel, basically, when, because Daniel's grown up in the series of in Cobra Kai, He's the karate kid, right? But he's an adult and he's got his own son. And his son goes, hey, um, I'm not going to say the name of the device because it'll probably trigger all of your Amazon devices at home. But he's like, 
order a, order me a new PS Vita because they're, they're so loaded. They got enough money that he can just do one of those one click purchases for a new one. I was like, yes, putting a PS Vita into Cobra Kai was a master stroke because I think the person who devi- the person who designed the original PS Vita, not this one, this is the PS Vita 2000, but the original PS Vita, the actual shell, I think it was designed by the same guy at Sony who designed the, the Sony Walkman? And that was how many years ago? How long ago was that? What's the, what, is it like the 35th anniversary or longer, the 45th anniversary of the Sony Walkman? Anyway, I digress. The point I'm trying to say is that you can actually replace a lot of words in here and it will start to feel a bit like what people are saying about the Steam Deck. See this, this quote here. What can I do with it that I can't do with a laptop or an iPhone? They might now be objecting. Too big for my pocket? Not big enough for serious use? Don't see the need. It's a solution looking for a problem. And definitely I feel like there's a large number of people who are looking at the Steam Deck and going, what? It's not as good as the Switch. And they're comparing every single visual aspect of this device. The shape, the analog sticks, the placement of the D-pad, the placement of the buttons, the number of buttons on the device, the ability to use a mouse and keyboard or not, or the fact that you're going to dock it and where you're going, where, would you actually dock this thing? Or like, how convenient would it be to use it in that form factor? All this stuff, which is basically like for like with the Nintendo Switch. People who are making these comparisons it's not wrong, and I understand why you're doing so, but I think that's not the point. What's the, p- the point? Because the goal is not to take down the Nintendo Switch. Even if Steam Deck comes out, Switch will still be very successful. They will still make loads of these, they'll still sell loads of these, and they'll still make loads of money. But Steam Deck has the ability to excel in ways that people are not actually paying attention to. Attention to because they're too busy comparing it to this device when what it's really trying to do is allow you to interact with your Steam library with a device which is actually quite affordable, which is not something we've really seen much of before. I think the GPD Win devices they were quite respectable, and I think actually the GPD Win was lower priced than this, the GPD Pocket. But what I'm Hoping to see, now this is the speculation portion of the video, what I'm hoping to see is that, like Steam said, I think they said for free of charge you can use Steam OS 3 in your devices. They're like quite happy to, for people to make other UMPC or Steam Deck form factor devices because they're not trying to be the only device out there. It's a bit like the Microsoft strategy where they're trying to sell Xbox Game Pass, but they don't care if they if you play Xbox Game Pass on your PC. They don't care if you're playing it on an actual Xbox, because if you play it on PC, you could be buying a PC from someone that's not Microsoft. In fact, probably 99% of people who own a PC are not, are not playing on a Microsoft built PC. In fact, are there, well, like Microsoft makes laptops like Surfaces and all that, but most people playing on a desktop PC either built it themselves or they bought it from somewhere else, but they're, you know, they're running it on Windows. So when you, buy X, when you buy into the Xbox Game Pass system, you're buying into Windows, you're buying into the subscription service, which is the Xbox Game Pass. Steam Deck, let's talk, I mean, we could talk about this in a separate video, but this is a very powerful company, not just because they've got money, but... Steam, this is probably the most popular of the digital distribution platforms. They've also got VR. They don't really care if you play VR with their headset. They just want you to be on Steam. Like if you use an Oculus headset, which remember, Oculus headsets make up over half. So like 60% of people on Steam VR, playing VR on their PC, they're actually using an Oculus headset, which is which is like the Quest 2. It's like designed designed to play games on its own without a PC, but people are like, no, but I gotta play it on, I gotta play those PC VR games. So if people, if they can legitimize this product category, and I don't know what it's called now, it's, it's called the, the deck, is it called the deck product category? If they can legitimize this product category, then things like this, they won't just die because the Steam Deck's out, they'll, they'll do better. Because now there is a reason there's like a larger push there's like a lo- there's like a larger overall push of the industry in general to work on games to make sure that they have a version 
or at least a settings like a, there is a way to set do the vid display settings and the graphics settings so that it will work on this the baseline steam deck but people for the people who for whom this is not enough not powerful enough those people can go and buy this and so i think by making a product like this and legitimizing the category other manufacturers are going to jump on board and go okay well now probably more people are going to be buying Steam Decks, not feeling satisfied with the performance, and they're going to want to spend $600, $800, $1,000, $1, $1,500 on versions of, UM, basically, UMPCs, but that have flashing lights. I've got RGB all over it, or maybe extra buttons, or you know, controllers that actually slide off a bit like a Nintendo Switch, or a more powerful dock, or the ability to run in full HD on the handheld, or the ability to run in 4K, if you dock it, all sorts of other things, it's scalable. They're turning it into a product category, which is scalable. And that means people who want to make stuff like this, like the Aya Neo, they all do well. But then everyone who buys one of these is most likely going to be installing this. Steam, I wanted to show you a picture of Steam, but it, the, the device turned around and started showing you the console. Um, <laughs> this, they want, they, if they, buy any other device, a large majority of them are still going to be installing Windows or Steam OS, and they're going to be running Steam. And so either way, Valve wins. And I'm, for the most part, again, I've, I think this is something to be talked about in another, in another video. For the most part, I'm fine with Valve being very successful. I do like the idea of competition. I do feel like it's very important that other distri digital distribution platforms exist because otherwise Steam can get away. If they change their mind, they'd be like, okay, we can really screw people over and sell things at a ridiculous price and force people to buy stuff because they don't have any other options. I think that would be bad. But from what I've seen so far from Valve, I don't think that's the ethos that they're going forward with with their company. And also, like they they seem quite open with the device. And this is something which is super refreshing to see because if they wanted to create a new product, I say create, if they wanted to legitimize a product category, they could have changed, they could have brought in a bunch of rules that from the console world that we don't like. Like the ability, like the fact that these consoles are kind of, I don't know if this is the correct term, but a walled garden where basically, you know, you've got to go through Nintendo if you want to put your software on this device or if you want to have any ability to like modify things, like it's all got to go through Nintendo really but on a device like this it's open you can modify stuff to your heart's content you can go into the games and you could install language packs maybe there's a number of games from a foreign country and you want to run them in English or whatever your home country's language is you could do that on this you most certainly can't be doing it on this you have to wait until someone else translates the game for you and releases it in your country with that version. And even then, it'll probably be four times more expensive, even though it was like a game for $10 on Steam. It's like, well, now we've got the English version and you can play it on your Switch. So here, give us $60. It's like, hmm, no. I think with this, I'm quite okay with Valve winning in the end. The fact that, you know, even if people go off and this product category explodes and there's tons of options for these deck style devices. I'm fine with Steam doing okay because from what I've seen, it's quite open. And, and even things like the OS, they're just like, you can actually just remove Steam OS and put Linux on the, any version of Linux on there. That I, some, I don't know if it's any version, but you know, the versions of Linux that would work on this. You could install Windows on this yourself. You don't have to run Steam OS. They're so open. And I just love, I mean, this is something that just naturally happens. If you are a casual gamer, 80% of people who buy a Nintendo Switch will just be happy with it forever and they'll just wait until a Nintendo Switch 2 comes out and then they'll buy that. But there's like 15, 20% of people who like have one of these and they're like, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating that we can't modify them. It's so frustrating that we can't install language packs. So it's so frustrating that we can't you know run the potato mode like on a pc you can run loads of games in potato mode which means that usually the game wouldn't run but on your really crappy potato pc if you change the settings with potato mode which is probably installed you know created by some user like part of the community 
Now you can run it on your potato hardware. But for that category of people, that 20%, I don't know if it's exactly 20%, for that category of people who have a switch and, you know, this is not enough, they want more. They've had a taste of handheld power, but they want more. They know that there could be more and they don't want to buy this yet. Maybe there will be people in that category who want to buy this. For people who are not quite ready to buy this, this is going to be such an amazing, powerful start. And then once this project category has become fully legitimized, the whole deck category is a thing, then you're going to see loads more options of stuff like this. $1,000 options, $2,000 options, options that have bigger battery life, bigger screens, better screens, more buttons, and just more options. It's really exciting because I think, thanks to this being at a lower price, it's going to make the whole industry become fruitful with options. And I think if there's anything that the PC side of the community likes in, in, the, in the gaming community, it's definitely options. We like options. Anyway, my question to you is, what do you think? Do you think I'm, do you think I'm being a little bit too enthusiastic or do you kind of see what I mean about this article where it's like, there, you know, when Stephen Fry showed up at this thing, this event for Apple, and people were like, yeah, but, uh, you know, the naysayers, basically. Eh, you know, it only runs iPhone software, and what they really should have done is they should have just made a powerful netbook, because that's what we were thinking they were going to make. The fact that they turned around and said, we're not going to give you just a super powerful UMPC. What we're actually going to give you is very, 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 like, don't get me wrong, this thing is many times more powerful than a Nintendo Switch, but it's not as powerful as required to run AAA games at ultra settings. It definitely, I'm fairly certain that most games are not going to be running at ultra settings on this, but clearly it has ample power to handle, hopefully, most of the games that are available for purchase on Steam. So let me know in the comments section below what you think. Of course, if you like this series, do subscribe for more by clicking that subscribe button. If you don't follow me on Twitter yet, you can check me out at Nihongo Gamer on Twitter. I stream on Twitch as well if you like to watch me play games. I love controllers, but I'm also really interested in this category, especially the Steam Deck, or rather the Deck category. I'm just, I'm just so excited about having a new name rather than the, the UMPC. Even as that is just as a name for a product category, it doesn't really have a, a ring to it. And if you're interested in hanging out with more people who like to, to talk about the stuff that they see on this channel, so controllers, games, and Japan, or anime, and drawing, and all sorts of stuff like that, you can join us on Discord, a community of people who hang out, talk about this stuff, but also get matches. If you're playing fighting games, you can just hang out and find people who also play those fighting games, learn together, play, get, play matches online together. It's all good fun. <sighs> That's all for now. I'm so excited about Steam Deck. Not just because I think it's going to has a good shot at being successful, but look at what it could open up as a category for other businesses trying to make similar type devices. I think it's really exciting. Until the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream, I'll see you around. Bye.